Yeah, so like you're the perfect guy to talk to about what you think. I mean, I made the list, but it's only because I grew up playing a little bit and watching all those superstars that kind of made the transition between snooker. And I think now maybe the overall level talent at the highest level, like you guys, Johnny, Alex, is even higher. But what do you think of the premise that the overall talent is not the same? Yeah, well, I, I didn't think there's less people that are playing full time. There's less people that are even playing at a competitive level where they're kind of doing it as like an income type of thing. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, there's more tournaments now. There was more action back then, so that that's a difference too. Well, the other uh, thing too is is like from me growing up is that there's more tournaments now, but it's all handicapped and you got to give the world. Like when I was right. growing up, like you found out where you were pretty quick because you weren't getting anything. Definitely, like, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's fine if I win a tournament, but I got six games from Eric. Does What does that mean? No, exactly. So yeah, I, and I, like I've seen that in Ontario a lot where I, I think, you know, it, it, it could possibly impede some players from going forward. But, you know, we, we've, especially recently, like we, we have guys like Waleed Hashem and Carlin Sanderson and John Andrade and, you know, Andy O'Penn's broken through that. John Mora grew, grew up in that. You know, he, he made it through. So I think there's always a way to make it through. But, I yeah, I think in, in a way it, it kind of gives players a, like a false sense of what the game really is, right? So, you know, if you're always getting three games from the best players and then you try and go out and play a tournament where there's where there's no handicaps, well, it's a bit of a different story, right? Oh, for sure. And that's, yeah, you, you don't always know where you stand, right? Mm-hmm. Before I, I'm going to ask you a question, but before, you might not know this, but here's a, just to show you uh, kind of the way pool links itself is, going way back, I, I was playing in the VNEA championships and our team, we we played against. We, I think we came third or fourth. I'm not sure, but we lost to you guys in this is at the VNEA, and you had you Jason Klatt. I'm not sure who the other three guys were, but they were unbelievable. Like we had just, we actually just beat Shane Van Boning's team. Wow. Who probably he maybe had four steps. I don't know, but. Mm -hmm. We're thinking we're world beaters, and we came against you guys, and you guys absolutely destroyed us. And you guys ended up winning that. that this was, in Vegas, or this was BNEA. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I just remember you and finding out that it was you and Jason Klatt. and I think he had. I think it was a. I think the team was out of Western Canada, but you had three yeah. other players on that team. It, it would have been out of Winnipeg. We never really joined up with anyone besides Winnipeg when we went to Vegas. Yeah, it was it was one of the things. It was you, Jason Klatt, and three yeah. other really good players. I have no idea who they were. But yeah, probably player. Felix was on there. Barry played with us a few times. Yeah, Barry <laughs> McLean. Yeah, what a team. <laughs> well, there's there's so many great players from Manitoba that don't really leave the province because they're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Really, you know, like the, if you go if you're going to the west, then you're talking about Saskatchewan, and if you go east, then really you're talking about Toronto, which is 20 hours away, right? So they go to North Dakota and they and they go to Minneapolis and around Minnesota there. Um, sometimes they make it out to Alberta. That's what we used to do when we were younger, right? But there's a ton of great players in Manitoba that don't that travel, you know, a little bit to those bar the, the bar table circuit down in North Dakota. You would have to kind of be in tune with what's going on down there to really know. And they win when they go down there, right? But um, there's there's 20 great players from Manitoba for sure. That's yeah. amazing. Well, that's what I was saying is like, I remember what, what really got me hooked. My, my very first big tournament is I, me, Barada, a few guys, we went up to Mont St. Anne. Mm -hmm. think, and, and my experience with the Canadian championships was like, first of all, we we're staying in a chalet. It was amazing. Right. And, but the player, like Jerry, like all of that list, they were all there close. There was like over a hundred players for sure. And for right. every, so if you came in the top eight in that tournament, like it was a feat because there was guys that were amazing that weren't, right? Mm -hmm. so, no offense to the way that it is, but I've been a proponent of this. It's we need to make the Canadian championships the way it's supposed to be. And that is, I don't know how we do it through qualifiers, whatever that may be, but we can't have the way it is now where 
there there's like 28 players and 20 of them are from toronto definitely like, not a yeah. championship right no, well, that's the way it used to work, right? And, that, and that's the way it did work for years. And the provincial associations were stronger. They qualified players out of the different provinces. And you'd always get at least four from each province, right? And, you know, a little more from the host province. But, um, you know, even back in the day when I used to qualify for the Canadian Championships, we would qualify like expenses paid out of Winnipeg. And, you know, they, they would do the same in Alberta and the same in B.C., yeah. BC always seemed to be a little weak on the qualifiers. I'm not really sure why, but Alberta for sure. Saskatchewan would send a few players. Yeah. I actually got a message uh, from Randy Pruden. You remember Randy Pruden? Of course. This is, he's the, the guy that we learned from when we were younger. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, just us around a little bit. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is like nowadays people don't even know the name, but the reality is at one point he's like world class. He was oh. eating amazing players and no one even knows his name yeah no no he, he was the guy that taught me how to play really i mean not 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 literally through lessons but in the summers when i would when i'd be off school and playing more i would go he was the house pro at the q club it was a um a franchise of rooms in winnipeg at, and they had three locations at one time and he was the house pro at the main players room and I'd go there and I'd play him three times a week. He'd play me for like, he'd play me $10 sets, you know, because we were, we were friendly and he would like, you know, he wanted to help me, right? And I'd win like 20% of them or something, if not worse, you know, like that's how good he was. Like this is when I was good, you know, like 16, right? But, yeah, no, he was, he was. A, My next question that I, I was going to say, like who, who are some of your mentors who are obviously that, that falls into that category, like Randy Pruden. Yeah, Randy. And then, you know, growing up after moving to Toronto, and I, I, I'd always spend a lot of time around Jay, too, Jason Klatt. And when I moved to Toronto, I spent a lot of time with John Mora. Those are the kind of guys that I, I learned from. Um, as far as international players, I, I like the way Shane plays. I've always liked the way Alex plays. Earl, you know, I, I, wa I watched a lot of the videos from Earl and Shane, kind of modeled myself a little bit after them. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is, I, from a Canadian perspective, do you do you think that some of the players now should be looking at the way that the pockets are tighter? So should their should their technique be a little like I look at someone like Earl Francis Francisco Bustamante and them? They were a lot looser. Now mm -hmm. I see players they're a little more. This is more for players that want to learn. It, it, it's a little more of a snooker style-ish in the sense that there's a pause. I agree, totally. And, and that's what the Europeans are teaching, and that's what the Taiwanese are teaching. Filipinos are more field players, but, you know, I, I'm kind of caught in that old, old, older-ish school group where it's like, uh, you know, of North American players where we're – it's not that I'm fundamentally bad, and it's not that I don't understand fundamentals and I have my own style, but we're not quite as tight as these – new european players like if you watch filler and guys like filler and shaw yeah you know they're fast players so you can get you can get kind of uh i don't know tricked into thinking that they're not really like fundamentally sound but if you watch them like they're not dropping their elbow their their backstroke is pretty short they're really compact you know a lot of taiwanese players are playing like that too right and it seems to be it's not that you can't win, you know, doing with big elbow drops and long backstrokes, you know, there's the, like Steyer plays like that. Mills Fain still plays like that. I do. I'm just kidding. No, but you know, I, I've, I've tried to change it around a little bit and it, it's, it's something that I'm still open to, but it's not how I grew up. Right. And I, I totally agree with you that, yeah, it's, it's tighter pockets now, less mistakes are being made. It's not winter breaks. In a lot of the tournaments, right? So, you know, if, if you're a little looser, then you can get in those, um, you know, kind of freewheeling roles where it doesn't, you know, you can, you just, you just go, right? You don't need to be that, that tight. But I think the level of play now and, and the alternate break stuff, and like you said, the pockets, it's kind of lending to a different style of play and different style of fundamentals for sure. Like a, that's where you, you get exposed a bit. And we see that at the Moscone Cup, right? Like the for great sure. players, all of a sudden now you only got one mistake for the set. That definitely, yeah, I see that too, and I and it's interesting. But the 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 big dilemma 
is that you, if you from our era, like you can't think too much either about it, right? Because you're still a field player at the end of the day. So right. if you don't change it too much, now all of a sudden you're trying to become someone that you're not. Right. And uh, you know, like I've put time into it. I've tried to change a things here and there and i have changed some things but i have to play the way i i'm i'm gonna play like i'm not making any egregious errors it's just a little bit different than some of these you know 20 year olds that are coming up but they're not all doing that you know what i mean like gorst is like long backstroke dropping right through it he's the current world nine ball champion they're not all doing it but more more often more more than not are i think yeah. it's a little more compact and now yeah. uh, well, I, I put it down here on the on the link, but uh, you're doing something great. I think that's very, you know, I don't want to say revolutionary, but you're you're offering some kind of uh, lessons online now that right. I, uh, is really helpful. Like I, if it wasn't available to me, I can tell you that when I was trying to get better, I was lucky to get a YouTube video. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, so it's been going well. It's something I started since um, since the shutdowns began and. It's something I've always thought about. I mean, not just being available to, uh, available to teach people in the in the Toronto area, but being able to available to teach anyone in the world. And yeah, it's it's great. I've been connect. I, I did a lesson yesterday with someone from the Bahamas. Been doing some with um, some lessons with Americans, and you know, being right next to someone, especially for the real intricate stuff, obviously is more beneficial. But I haven't found anything. I've never had a lesson yet where it's like, this just didn't work or there was yeah. something I couldn't explain over video. Um, you know, I'm, I'm well, falling sure. into it and kind of getting a feel for it. And I, I find that it's okay. And yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to do it after the rooms open up again. Well, that's fantastic. And that's, a, like I said, well, this is the first one, but I, I really want to give a platform to a lot of the players because the, like the reason I came up with the list in the first place was there's just so many talented and there's so much knowledge out there. And I remember me growing up, it was practically impossible to get knowledge. And now you have avenues like this where you're actually willing to give up and coming players that matter and, and that want to get better your knowledge. Because at the end of the day, when you're playing pool, like getting that type of knowledge is incredibly beneficial. Yeah, my and, and the thing is, I, I've always enjoyed it. I've been teaching for 15 years now, and I've been teaching in the last five to seven years on a, a bit more of a regular basis. And I, I never go into a lesson being like, "Oh, geez, I, I have to do a lesson." It's just I, I love the game so much that I, I I enjoy helping people learn and the smiles on people's faces. And you know, really, in the end, the game like to play the game at a high level is very implicit. It's not like I don't expect people to figure it out on their own. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, know, for sure. I, I did, and I'm, I'm sure you did it in, in some way because, again, we didn't really have that available to us, right? But, you know, it's a different world now. And like you said, through online lessons and kind of generally people seeing the game more as um, just more intricate and, and really breaking the game down instead of like, let's just run out and let's smash the rack and hope something goes in, you know, stuff like that. Right. The game's evolved a lot. I think even since I was younger. That's amazing. No, it's, and I was actually just talking to someone about like, it's nowadays, it's amazing how like we're, we're finding out that just cause it was done like at a high level doesn't mean it wasn't something that could be improved on. Right. And for example, it took what, how many years to realize that like you could do a soft break. Like, like everyone was taught you smash it as hard as you can. And now they're, they're actually putting in rules that you're not allowed to do a soft break, but no. Sure. One yeah. Yeah. Well that, that, that went along with, you know, realizing that the corner ball was the most wired ball on the rack. Right. People just didn't figure that out for a long time. Yeah, you know? well, think it so. was for like 50 years. And then all of a sudden now we're making rules to not do it. For sure. Yeah. Well, so the, what what we'll do just to end up here? I, I sent you a list of like like I'm gonna call it speed pool. So hopefully I can do this with a bunch of players, and like they would like to get involved in this, promote what they got going because I think 
like ultimately my thing is that there's so many talented Canadian pool players that are getting no platform. So hopefully mm -hmm. this can at least start something. You, you've been to my pool room and you know tailgaters. We do that. But I, I want to like start to promote this on another level. And my ultimate goal would be that maybe a Canadian championships can be legit because I mean, people might get mad at me for saying this, but the reality is right now it's kind of a joke. Like yeah, it, 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 it has to start at the local level. You know, I, the, I again, the, the qualifier route is the way to go. 100%. And, and yeah. And just finding ways to get more prize money in, in, in the game too. Right. If you don't qualify, the way the the national championships has, has been is just it's tough to travel to it because of the price money, right? But the, the 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 qualifying, like you said, is the key because that's it's almost like poker, right? That's where it, if thousands of people put in small amounts, that's how you get it. If you're just right. expecting someone to on their own go to here, we know that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. so come up with a, with a way that how does every because even like if you look at tailgater as my room it would benefit me too if i could run qualifier so if every pool room in canada had like this list of a qualifier and we started from there maybe there's opportunity there definitely yeah and i think we talked about that before is like like without the qualifiers it's like satellites in, in, in poker with if you don't have satellites you're never going to get the big money yeah, well, exact. Well, the thing is that when you have qualifiers, you can make the entries big, right? And and you can just have a built-in prize fund. You don't have to rely on outside sponsorship. You know that that's another story. And and, and you, I'm sure you know yourself how hard it is to get sponsorship for pool events, and it's a shame, right? But um, just on prize money alone, and and making it kind of viable to travel to to events it's it's it has been shown like you know even with the us open the entry is a thousand dollars well sure the prize money is decent it's not again it's not even the best but the entry is a thousand dollars a lot of the monthly a lot of the prize fund comes from the entry right and i don't i don't think that's awful you know what what, what can we do until the game gets televised you know, no, we have to build the game until the game gets televised right so um yeah i think just going back to that high entry, qualifying players, that, that that's the way to go for the national championships, I believe. I remember I remember uh, you guys when you I think they had the right concept with that with that bonus ball. Because I remember you was it you, Jason and Johnny with Team Canada? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think the right idea the only problem is because I was in Vegas when they were coming and promoting it. I'm like I remember. it's like you're not gonna like it's not about bonus ball the, the idea is amazing but mm -hmm. now the you're trying to pr promote a game that like I, and i always said this and some people say i'm wrong but i was like why not do the same concept but in eight ball because the world champions you, like you're walking around talking to people that are currently playing in an eight ball tournament on sure. so like whether or not the game is better or not is not the point. It's that you're now going to have to talk people into understanding bonus ball. Yeah, it was a tricky part of the whole thing for sure. Yeah, but I, I like the team concept that he had. You know, I, I like the league format. I Me think, too. and you know, yeah, if you watch the most successful event in pool, it's the Moscone Cup, right? You know, yeah, playing playing for a team. Yeah, no. some some sports survive on. Um, Singular, you know, golf and tennis, bowling, darts. That's but about if, it. Even if you look at like a tennis, it's still very, they're still marketing the players, right? And, mm -hmm. and that, that's one thing I would say that pool needs, they, they need, they're doing a little better job, but I love the idea of like, like drama is drama. Like if you look at MMA, like you think people watch UFC because they actually, like how many people are actually, watching it because they love the intricacies of mma or is it because they just want to see this rivalry that's why conor mcgregor made 100 million dollars right? i agree he's so like i feel like pool needs a, not to be afraid sometimes to challenge each other make rivalries do and that's where the moscone cup like you said is incredible because mm -hmm. 
I'm cheering for this and you're cheering for that. The rest mm. of it, it is, is a bonus. But I, I I'm either want Team USA or I want Europe. Yeah, and it's like players are encouraged to, to show emotion and players are encouraged to, you know, say things off the cuff and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah there's no reason that can't work in pool. It, it, other things haven't worked, right? So I think that's that could be the way to go for pool. Yeah. That's a great – uh, That's no, I'm glad you said that because, like, I've been saying that and sometimes – like, what I get is a lot of people – I get backlashes. They're like, no, 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 you got to be respectful for the game. you got to do it. And they go back to that old school mentality, which I kind of get, but it's like you said, it hasn't worked. Like, right. It's not that I'm disrespectful. It's that we need, like people don't want to watch robots. They want to watch some emotion. They want a reason to, to be invested in it. Yeah. And I think as pool players, we need to not be afraid to do that and not be looked at as, oh, we're disrespecting the game. No, we're trying to promote the game. Yeah. I mean, like even Filler, you know, he's he's more animated even in uh, outside of the Moscone Cup, and and still he gets backlash from it, right? I, I don't think it's bad at all, you know? I, exactly. You're talking not about respectful when he's at the table. He's just he's not afraid to celebrate, and he's not afraid to show that he believes in himself, stuff like that, you know? It's, it's not bad for the game at all, I don't think. Shaw, Shaw borders on that kind of stuff too, you know? Well, let's look at Strickland. I mean, I know Strickland is a whole other element, but you can't argue the fact that he's must see TV. So, he's a draw for sure. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, and it's like whether or not you agree with what he does, there's limits. But the reality is, I'd rather see him and Shaw to play or him and Filler when there's some animosity than two guys that it, there's no invested interest. And that's yeah, I, how it works, right? We choose what we want to watch. Mm hmm. But no, I, it, it, it's great to talk to you about that because, like I said, I've, I've always had a lot of backlash from that. And I, I hope that, that the up and coming players realize that we, we need to try and at least mix things up a little bit. Doesn't mean we, we, we totally get away from what makes school great, but we can't be afraid to try and get the, the just due that it deserves, right? I agree. And uh, so uh, just to, to end off, I did a little thing, speed pool, quick segment. So what's that? Question number one, what's your favorite pool game? Like what, what gives nine, you ball suit, nine ball suits my game the best. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best game. It's pretty offensive, but uh, I like playing offense, so it's, it's my favorite game. Uh, your favorite sports team? Uh, New York Yankees. <laughs> That's what, it's yeah. not a popular opinion. I'm supposed to say the Jays or something. Of course, the Jets, right? You know. Yeah. yeah. The Winnipeg well, Jets, of course, for my heart. But I, I like watching the Yankees. Uh, I'm a big baseball fan. Favorite movie? The Beach. The Beach, awesome movie for sure. Yeah. Uh, favorite athlete of all time, any sport? Hmm. Never thought about it really. I like Muhammad Ali. Um, that'd be the first answer that comes to mind. I never really thought about it. Yeah, I know. There's so many, I guess, right? Yeah. And and not necessarily the best, but your favorite pool player of all time. Uh. I like the way I, I like something about Alex. There, you know, I, I've said this to people in the past before, and, and I, I've rarely said it about anyone that I've, I've ever watched play, but when he gets over the ball, he makes me feel like he's not going to miss. I don't, it's kind of a stupid statement, but yeah, just yeah. the way he's set up over the ball, and, and it's that compactness too, and just the kind of the look he has in his eye. I really feel like he's not going to miss. It's hard to explain, especially when he's playing well, right? Of course he's not. You know, I've seen him in, in spots where he's playing a little weaker, and I, I don't necessarily feel that. But when he's playing well, I just feel like he's like a dialed-in player that I guess I've seen him a little more than the other players. Maybe, yeah, maybe than, than the other players. But he just gives me that feeling like he's, he's so solid over the ball that he's not going to miss. So I, I – I, I always found that interesting about him. 
Yeah, that, no, that's great. You know, I, I'm, I, just to add on to him is what we were talking about earlier is I feel like that guy, as talented as he is, he does have that charisma. He does have that sure that marketability, right? So in any other sport, they would pick that up and run with it. Meanwhile, right. he's been a hard time, you know, like the, the, he's genuine and he 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 makes you want to enjoy the process. Whereas you could be as great as you want, if but the reality is, is I don't necessarily want to watch you for more than twenty minutes, no matter how good you are. He's not for that. Sure. And every sport has those type of players that are boring too. It's it's okay. It's not like everyone has to go out of their way, you know, to be a you know an Alex or a filler or whatever. But but to have those people in the game should be encouraged. I think if you know if it's in your personality, you shouldn't feel you shouldn't feel badly about bringing it out, right? And that, and that you know what? That's the exactly. The, to me, the point is that it's okay to allow personalities to develop because if you don't, then you know you're going to maybe see you're not going to be encouraged the greatness of the sport. Mm -hmm. don't, don't say, "Oh, you're disrespecting the sport because you're cheering." The reality sure. is, built on cheering, and if you want to pretend that it's like everyone wants to do a fist bump deep down, it's just we've all been taught, "Oh, don't do that," even right. though you feel that inside, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know what, Eric? I'll, I'll leave it at this. This is the first one I've done. I think it's amazing. Okay. If you want to say anything? Like I said, if uh, a website we can go to, because I know there's. I'm going to promote this as soon as we're off this to all my elite players. I know you you do a great job of teaching, and and I think it's a really great concept right now. Well, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention my my uh, recent involvement with the King Q Sports Academy. Um, was, it's right now they're going under uh, on Facebook and their website. You, you have it at the bottom there. I'm not actually one of the founders. I, I hate to correct you on that, uh, but I, I've joined them now. So I, I guess you could call me a founder. One of the one of the early guys in. Um, but yeah. So they uh, have you noticed that blue ball challenge on Facebook? I saw that with uh, with Jimmy, right? Mm hmm. Well, so so they they brought it to the corner bank one day and yeah. let Jim do it, and John Everecki did it. John White did it. They had a uh, a, a lot of top Canadian players um, uh, contribute to it. And that's one of the things they've been doing during the shutdowns. But basically, uh, it's going to be a group that's focused on instructional promotion. So like bringing new players into the game. And there, we, we will be working on together two sides of the game, like the, for snooker and for pool as well. I'm more taking care of the pool side. They'll be helping me out with that as well. Might be bringing some more people in, in the future. But basically what we're going to be working on is um, like a seven or eight step program, kind of like similar to like a martial arts belt system to train players, particularly new players, players that are new to the game. That's amazing. You know? yeah. yeah. So they're going to be based out of the corner bank in Toronto. And we're going to be doing stuff all over Ontario and hopefully all over Canada in the future. But it's an amazing idea because I've always said this and it's interesting that you would, it's for whatever reason. So for example, if I wanted to learn how to play golf, immediately I'd go take lessons. Right. Yet there are so many people that play very recreationally pool, but would never even think about getting a pool lesson. But the reality is, it's not about whether you're in a tournament or you're in a league. It's about if you want to do this at any level, you need someone like this to at least give you the one, two, threes so that you can start from there. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and what we're planning on doing in, in, with this academy is, is, is um, just kind of breaking it down into really finding a program that's going to help, this, especially beginners kind of get a grasp of the game, right? If someone comes to me and, I, and, and tells me and asks me to teach them how to play pool, of course I can do that, but more of like a regimented way of doing it, right? And so it's something we're going to develop, and yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. We're, we're just waiting for the rooms to open, really. You know, uh, we're, we're in the midst of developing the course. Um, they, like I said, during the lockdown, they did that, that blue, uh, the blue ball challenge stuff. 
but I'm really excited to be working with these guys. Um, hey, well, let me know uh, if, if there's anything I can help with. Because like I said, obviously you've been to my room many times and uh, you know that we, we got a, a fair amount of league players. So this is probably right up their alley. So I'd love to be involved in any way. For sure, yeah. And, and you know, just for room owners or maybe room owners that wouldn't necessarily be uh, familiar with me personally, it would it would be more what we're trying to build is a brand where you know we're we are certified instructors we're not just you know good players you know yeah. that know the game like we're i'm i'm not saying that i'm not a certified instructor but what i'm getting at is more of a legitimized way of presenting things and again especially for beginners that might not know me personally or i really feel like it's a good way to kind of get them into the game yeah no for sure and there's so many like like i know like i see it all the time at delegators is players just they, they just need that one or two that little instruction and then they'll let their talent kind of come to but what the reality is most players haven't been i find in golf is you're humbled because you're in the trees whereas in pool it's kind of like uh, I might beat the guy beside me and my buddy, even though we're both don't know what we're doing, but because I'm beating him, I feel he's a good pool player. Right. No, I know. And especially because there's no exposure on TV, right? So people don't even know what it, what a really, what a top player is exactly. or what a top player looks like. Yeah. So they think I, this is my buddy. He's the best in reality. He has no fundamental in golf. No. He kind of, quickly realize you're no good when you're shooting 112 and you're never on the green, right? There's any sport, any sport, really. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I, I've appreciated everything we've said, but to me, the most important thing is to somehow get the game back on TV. Because if people aren't seeing the game, it's, you know, it's just going to be like something that they're attracted to because of a hobby or a friend brings them into it, which, which has worked for a long time. But, you yeah. know, I... Yeah, I, I believe in this. I, I believe in this game more than anyone, and I believe if people see it, they'll want to play it, right? So, well, that's a great. Matchroom getting more involved is big for that, because Matchroom has the TV connections, right? So you know, Matchroom has the World Championships now. They're going to be promoting the U.S. Open. You know, the World Championships not being televised for years, and the U.S. Open not being televised for years. It's just like that was stuff that was never going to advance the game, you know, but now that Matchroom's kind of getting involved with stuff like that, I really have hope that things are going to move forward. Well, I agree. I, for sure. And they, they, they seem to have at least that the right vision. Uh, hopefully uh, they, they can, with Moscone Cup, even the World Cup, any one of their events is you, you want to watch. So they mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Well, thanks, Eric. I really appreciate it. You know, no like, problem. What I've done, and for anyone that's watching this, as many people that can subscribe, I'm going to do my best to try and get as many interviews. I'm going to try and promote pool. It's, it's good for me, too, because obviously I own tailgaters. But I just I just feel like we need to get our voice out there. I'm going to I'm gonna post a lot of videos on this. If you have anything you want, feel free to send it to me. I just want to start a channel where all of us can try and get towards what you're saying is, where pool gets on TV, where it gets there. Cause it's not that a lot of people don't like pool. It's just, we have to figure out a way to get it on TV and get the right like recognition. Well, and, and just getting people to think about it more in, in like a, a professional manner rather than a recreational manner. Because I, I think, I think you know this too, like the, the actual participation numbers in pool are, are very big. Well, exactly. Or, or if you just made like a layman's statement, like, have you ever hit a pool ball in your life? Like almost everyone has compared right. to how many people have shot a hockey puck or something. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's a, people know about the game, but it's more like getting involved at a higher level, I think is, and, and that's what the, the televised stuff will bring. I think. Yeah. No, well said. And then that's, you're right. And then hopefully we can start somewhere, but I mean, getting people like yourself that have played at the highest level and have the understanding, and myself, I have a pool hall that I, I at least I get to interact with these people. So how do we link that? This is a start, and hopefully we can give it its just due.
because I, sure. I said I know for a fact it's not because people don't enjoy the game. It's that they haven't been able to be exposed at the right level. Definitely. Well, thanks again, Eric. I appreciate it. Okay, no problem. And just as a, just as a parting note, uh, you can check out my Facebook page as well, uh, the Champions Club. I have some instructional stuff on there. It's something that I'm working towards building. Not really ready yet to make a public announcement about the end goal with everything going on there, but it's going to be coming soon, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to be working on that as well. Okay, it's called the Champions Club? Yeah. Okay, and also when, when you do get it going, feel free, just message to me, and I have a Facebook group that, that I have a bunch of people, and I'll, I'll link it to there too. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Eric. Okay, nice talking to you. Okay. You Hope too. to see you soon in the pool room. Yeah, so no kidding. Can't wait to run a tournament. Okay, okay. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, okay. Eric. Okay, bye.